Dear students, welcome to my channel, Dr. V. R. Pudli, Professor of Management and Economics. In this video, I am dealing with Walter's theory of dividend, popularly known as Walter's model. Dividend theories, relevance of dividend, Walter model. There are conflicting opinions regarding the impact of dividends on the valuation of a firm. According to one school of thought, dividends are irrelevant so that the amount of dividends paid has no effect on the valuation of a firm. On the other hand, certain theories consider the dividend decision as relevant to the value of the firm measured in terms of the market price of the shares. Walter proposition or Walter model. Walter's model supports the doctrine that dividends are relevant. According to Walter, the investment policy of a firm cannot be separated from its dividend policy and both are interlinked. The choice of an appropriate dividend policy affects the value of an enterprise. The key argument in support of the relevance proposition of Walter's model is the relationship between the return on firm's investment or its internal rate of return, shortly known as R, and its cost of capital or the required rate of return, shortly known as K. The firm would have an optimum dividend policy which will be determined by the relationship of R and K. Walter's model relates the distribution of dividends or retention of earnings to available investment opportunities. If a firm has adequate profitable investment opportunities, it will be able to earn more than what the investors expect since R is greater than K. Such firms may be called growth firms. For growth firms, the optimum dividend policy would be given by a D by P ratio of 0. In contrast, if firms do not have profitable investment opportunities, the shareholders will be better off if earnings are paid out to them so as to enable them to earn a higher return by using the funds elsewhere. In these firms, R will be less than K. These firms are called declining firms and a D by P ratio of 100 would be an optimum dividends policy for these firms. Finally, when R is equal to K, in case of normal firms, it is a matter of indifference whether dividends are distributed or not. According to Walter, for such firms, there is no optimum dividend policy or D by P ratio. Assumptions of Walter's model. 1. All financing is done through retained earnings, implying external sources of funds like debt or new equity capital are not used. 2. With additional investments undertaken, the firm's business risk does not change. It implies that R and K are constant. 3. There is no change in the key variables, namely 
beginning earnings per share E and dividends per share D. 4. The firm has perpetual or very long life. Walter had given following model for finding market price of the share to prove his argument. P is equal to D plus R by KE into E minus D whole divided by KE, where P is the prevailing market price of a share, D is dividend per share, E is earning per share and R is the rate of return on the firm's investment. Walter had given a model for finding market price of the share to prove his argument. P is equal to D plus R by KE into E minus D whole divided by KE, where P is the prevailing market price of a share, D is dividend per share, E is earnings per share, R is the rate of return on the firm's investment, KE is cost of equity capital. Limitations of Walter model. 1. The model would be only applicable to all equity firms. 2. The model assumes that R is constant. This is not a realistic assumption because when increased investments are made by the firm, R also changes. 3. By assuming a constant KE, Walter's model ignores the effect of risk on the value of the firm. Dear students, in this video, I had dealt with relevance of dividend Walter model. Thank you.